Any of you probably know this character. This is Arthur. It's a character from a US book or show for children. But that's who is Arthur? The question is, what is Arthur? Well, Arthur is conceptually an aardvark. But why though? Well, let's just talk about aardvark, shall we? Let me brought up the question as always. What exactly is Arthur? I mean, aardvark. Aardvark is a placental mammal from Africa. They are actually quite closely related to the elephant shrew that I talked about in the last video. Their name is taken from African language. It means earth pig. They are classified in the order Tubulidentata, which means tube teeth. They are classified in the familia Oryctheropodidae, with one extant genus, which is Oryctheropus, and only one extant species, which is itself Oryctheropus afer. By the way, Oryctheropus means burrowing food, and afer indicates African origin. Well, both the common name and scientific name already shows their characteristics, which is kinda a massive spoiler for the next portion of this video, but it is what it is. Artfark have a relatively chunky body with arched back, which is why their namesake has pig written on it. They have a long head with a tubular but flattened muzzle, like a pig snout. Their ears are also long, by the way, and their tongue is also long. And they have long hairs covering their body. But wait, there's more. Guess what else is long, thick, and muscular? Yep, it's their tail, which is quite interesting in my opinion. Well, if you expect a certain reproductive organ, you can see the clear picture of it, but you might be disappointed. It's in this publication. Check it out yourself if you want. I'll leave the link in the description. Moving on, they have a relatively short but powerful limbs with strong and straight claws on each toe. They have four toes on the forefeet and five toes on the hind feet. And now let's talk about their teeth, which is unique among mammals, or among animals in general to be fair. It's the unique characteristics of their order. So, the newborns have small incisors and canine, but soon fall away. Adults only have free molars and molars. And all of their teeth are like tubes, as their namesake. The premolars consist of one column, while the molars have two columns on each tooth. Their teeth consist of osteodentin, which is common in non-mammals, but not present in any other mammals. Also, their teeth don't have enamel, which makes them grow continuously, just like red incisor. They are made of hexagonal prisms of dentin, which is very unique. They burrow a lot, a lot lot, which is why they are called the earth pig, because they are like pigs that live inside the earth underground, which is also why their genus name means burrowing food. Because of this habit, and also because they are nocturnal, meaning they are active during the night, artfarks are seldom observed in the wild. They are the largest burrowing stun mammal. Their short but strong feet with strong claw are specialized for digging. Not only that, remember when I said their tail is thick, long, and muscular? Yeah, that also helps when digging. Think of it like a wiper, but for dirt. They made three types of burrow. The first is for food exclusively. The second is for temporary shelter. The third is for permanent residence, where they return and where they keep their newborns. Usually, females are the one that use this kind of burrow, while the males are nomadic. These burrows can be simple, like just a straight tunnel. Usually, you'll see simple burrows when they look for food. Meanwhile, the burrows for shelter are usually more complex, often with many entrances, with a round and bigger chamber as the place where they reside. When they leave their burrow, they usually close the entrance. Burrows made by artifacts also affect the ecosystem. Abandoned burrows provide good quality soil for plants to grow allowing establishment of many different species of plants. A lot of animals also use their burrows as a shelter. At least 27 species of vertebrates are observed to use the burrows. One of the most common occupants is the warthog. They shelter in these burrows to protect themselves from heat or cold. So, 
Based on the forms, long snout, long tongue, you might have already guessed their diet. Yep, they are insectivores. Most of their diets are ants and termites. They even dig to the middle of termite mounds to eat. But hey, remember what their teeth look like. So, if you know things about animal structure and function, there is a glaring contradiction. You see, animals that eat insects are usually either equipped with sharp teeth, like the member of Ordo Ulipotifla or insectivore bats, or, if they especially eat ants and termites, they don't have teeth at all, like the anteaters. Another fact is, Artfark has a large cecum. If you have watched my video on elephant roo, you might be familiar with this condition. So, why though? Well, they eat a certain, very specific cucumber, which is very funny and interesting. The cucumber is called the Artfark cucumber, Cucumis humifructus. It's very unique among the cucumber, where their fruit is located underground. The fruits also have a tough skin and can remain for months before decaying. Because of this, they can't really spread their seed, except if a certain animal digs for it, ate it, and then the seed can be dispersed. And that certain animal is the artfark. So, this plant is reliant to the artfark for the continuation of its species. And you might think, what did the artfark get? Well, as you might already know, cucumbers are usually watery. During drought, when water is very scarce, artfark may eat these fruits as water source. So, all in all, it's a mutualistic symbiosis. A weird and funny one, if I do say so myself. Historically speaking, like evolutionary I mean, artfark probably emerges in Africa. Currently, their distribution is also limited to Africa. Their earliest fossil record is from the early Miocene of Eastern Africa, roughly around 20 to 18.5 million years ago. Evidence for their evolutionary relation and history had been proposed a couple of times, but everything is debatable. For example, the Ptolemaida are thought to be a close relative to the artfark based on their teeth, but it's not conclusive because the noted similarities are only hypsodon molars that wear down to a flat surface, long and shallow mandible with elongated symphysial region, and trigonids and talonids that are separated by lateral constrictions. Basically, not so much, and still a lot of glaring differences. When you compare it to other extant mammals, Artfark is one of, if not, the latest to emerge. Some calls them a living fossil, because they basically did not change for over 20 million years. So, now that we know more about Artfark, let's talk about Arthur. Let's be fair here, Arthur doesn't really look like Arvark, does he? Well, yeah, I think so too. In fact, I'm quite baffled when I hear Arthur is an Artfark. But then, I looked up the original design. And here he is. See? His original design does look a lot more like Artfark. In fact, it's one of the pots that he is upset and embarrassed that he has a long nose. As time goes by, his design become less Artfark, and then you get this version for the TV series. And so, I was wondering, why Artvark though? Like, there are many animals in the world. Why choose Artvark for your characters? And so, I stumbled upon the answer in the Arthur wiki. Apparently, the creator thought about the character when his son asked him to tell a story based on weird animal. And so, he thought of weird animals, starting with the letter A, which is why Artvark came up. Quite practical, I guess. Artvark is weirdly quite popular and is used in many things. Apparently, among the Dagomba people of northern Ghana, Artvark is said to have a superpower and have their own complex societies underground. Like the thing you heard about lizard men, how Mark Zuckerberg is a reptilian or something, but Artvark people instead of reptile. They said that hunters have encountered Artvark in the bushes and they were invited to the subterranean city, visiting the market where Artvark purchases food and stuffs. There was a cartoon around 50 years ago with Artvark as the antagonist. 
And quite finally, some fighter jets are also called artfark. The General Dynamics F-111 artfark is named that way because of the long nose and low level operational capabilities. The fighter squadron F-114 is also nicknamed artfark because of the similarity. They even have artfark as the official insignia, which is quite something. All in all, artfark was already quite popular. Even so, I think not a lot of people actually know how unique their biology is. Well, if you watched this video up till now, at least you know more about them. Maybe we'll know more about them in the future, as new publications are still being made about them, even in recent years. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now.